Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do kind of a variety, right? Kind of a little bit of everything, a little bit of whatever I want. Okay, for um today, the first thing I have to... Hey, Naomi, I'm so glad you're here. I can't believe you stayed up for me. <laughs> uh, I, hope, I hope you're not too sleepy. Um, thank you so much. Um, so I wanted to start with telling you guys that uh, first off, it is actually kind of cold here. We turned on the heat um, for tonight because it's actually a little bit cold. Also, the husband and the roommate are playing some Call of Duty. See if y'all hear some interesting noises in the background. Uh, I apologize. It's either the heater or it is my roommate's bass <laughs> from his Call of Duty. Oh my gosh. Hey, Lunar. Hey, Marina. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you guys, um, in, in, in aside from the strange noises that you might hear, is... I missed streaming so much. I missed hanging out with you guys uh, so, so much. I didn't really like, I didn't really fully process how not streaming for a week was going to feel, but after doing it so much and then stopping for a week, I'm not gonna lie, it felt really weird. Um, now we are gonna probably take a hiatus over Christmas and New Year's. Like we'll talk a little bit about that some more once we get closer. But of course this week we're streaming and next week we're definitely streaming. So uh, we'll talk about that when it gets closer, but it felt so weird to not stream for a week, like so freaking weird. Oh my God, I can't even. All right, so um, that's that kind of stuff. I also wanted to mention to you guys a update about Freya's Voyage. So thank you to everyone who was able to attend the stream where we put together the Discord server. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing that. It was so much fun with you guys. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do another little thing like that. If you check down in your spell reagents that's at the bottom of the chat, you will see that there is another one for um, revealing a Freya's Voyage spoiler. So well, how this is going to work is you can redeem it every 15 minutes, which means that you have time to redeem eight of them throughout the stream. So if you redeem all eight, you will get all eight unlocked. So what I did is I pulled some images that uh, our wonderful friend Naomi here put together as inspiration for Freya's Voyage, and I will reveal as many of those as you guys unlock tonight. So you should see that down in your spell reagents, so make sure you guys are redeeming those every 15 minutes so that we can get all eight and you guys can get a really nice update on how the uh, role play is going and see the beautiful aesthetic of it. So then I can also tell you a little bit about kind of the timeline at this point. So we've got the veterans in there. We are building stuff. Ah, Lunar, thank you so much. So that's one we are definitely going to look at. Um, okay, so we have the veterans in there. They are building all of the stuff. They have, um, they were, we're setting up all the different locations, setting up um, all of the, the different like lore pieces that hadn't been set up yet. And it is going really amazingly. Like I am just blown away by some of the things that people have written for it, um, especially some of the background pieces. Like they're really, really super cool. So that should be all done on the 16th. That's the date that we're shooting for right now is to be done with all of that on the 16th. So then what we're going to do is we're going to have a period where those veterans have a chance to submit their characters. We're probably only going to do a few days of that. So what I'm thinking is probably, so the 16th is, I'm just pulling up a calendar here. The 16th is a Wednesday, right? So we're probably going to give them until Saturday to submit their first characters, right? So they get a first shot at that. That also um, helps us, the mods, not have a gajillion things to review at the same time. So we'll go through reviewing their their first characters, right? And then what I'm thinking is on the 19th, my hope is that we can roll it out so that you guys can join and submit your characters. The, you know, those of you that are interested in joining the, joining the role play will have an application acceptance period for about two weeks after the 19th. And then when we come back, from New Year's, we will actually open the role play. That is the plan. Hopefully that will all come to pass exactly as I've described it, but I will keep you guys updated if it doesn't. So those of you that aren't in the cafe discord server, make sure that you're in there because if anything changes with that, that's where I'll let you guys know, right? But that's the plan. That's what we're shooting for. It is moving right along right now. So at this point, I don't see any reason why we won't make that plan. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to to show it to you guys and let y'all see everything that we've been working on. It's really cool. Okay, so let's next 
talk about a little debrief on the previous video. So we didn't debrief, of course, on the Sagittarius video because it was Thanksgiving, right? Um, so I, I apologize, I don't have a, uh, an inspiration post for you guys, but um, I feel like that's probably okay. But what I wanted to say in regards to the Sagittarius episode is that I have a poll. I'm bringing this up. I have a poll on my Patreon. Just pulling this over. So if you are a patron and you have not taken a look at this yet, please go ahead and take a look at this. And if you'd like to participate, then um, all it takes is a, a dollar this month, right? And you can vote in this poll. So I'm going to show it to you guys. All right. So we only have one more Zodiac video. And that whole project will be done. And what that means is that for 2021, we need a new inspiration project. So MBTI is clearly what's win winning. Bleh, sorry. MBTI is clearly what is winning right now. Um, so I hope you guys are excited about that. If you're not, though, of course, you can still vote in the poll. There's still time before I start kind of working on that that uh, that grouping of videos so if you're interested in something else um, please make sure that you vote here in this poll and if you're not a patron it's only a dollar a month and then you you will be able to to vote in this poll so these were some of my ideas so some of this other stuff you know even though we're probably going to do mbti it looks like for 2021 i don't know maybe in 2022 we'll do chinese zodiac right um i didn't put it on the poll but another one we could potentially do in the future is, is tarot cards um, just because I don't, I don't have enough information on the tarot stuff right now, but who knows by next year I might. So this is kind of some plans for 2021. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because this really does also tie into what we're going to talk about today. Cause we're going to talk about, uh, setting up, you know, kind of setting up and staying organized, right? So I plan really far ahead, as you can see here, planning a whole thing for 2021. Landon, oh my gosh. I'll have to type this message to you. Here we go. Ah, uh, well, at least you're here. Okay, there we go. Since Landon can't hear me, I had to type that out. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming today, though. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. So let's go back here. So that's really all about the Sagittarius characters um, video. Uh, Landon, of course, is our resident Sagittarius. So I hope she liked it, but she has no idea what I'm saying right now. So she probably can't tell me. Uh, but there's just one more. There's just Capricorn. Um, and it, that's it's filmed. It's in the can. It's uh, it's scheduled to go up. So um, excited for you guys to see that final one. And then we'll move to probably MBTI. But we'll see. OK, and then the actual video yesterday was writing with sound. Okay, so writing with sound. This is something that I have been thinking about in regards to, you always hear this advice, right? Like you always hear this advice that's like, you know, write about all five senses. But a lot of times when you hear that advice, it kind of stops there. It doesn't really go into like, okay, well, how do you write about those other senses? So this is kind of the first video in that series, which is about sound. I also want to do one about um, taste and smell. I feel like those are pretty interlinked, so I can probably do that in one video. And then probably one in regards to like, you know, touch, temperature, uh, all of those other things that uh, that you can write about in regards to like those feelings, right? This is a series that started with this one. We're going to do a few more that are like this. So I hope you all enjoyed that video. It was fun. It was fun to do a little bit of uh, actual like writing advice research. I know those videos don't do quite as well as my ones that are more about like the social aspects of role play, but it's still important to me to get that information out there. So here we go, writing with sound. And and I got a funny comment on this one. Um, I think it was the only actual comment, but it was like, she's saying all the things that are in this in this book I read. And I, he didn't say what book. So I'm <laughs> intrigued what book. But uh, but yeah, so I guess that means it was good. Um, I, I enjoyed making this one. It was fun to research. But, she, but hasn't been shown yet. Yeah, I'm going to show them all at the end. I'm going to show them all at the end. So if you redeem all eight, you will see all eight at the end of the stream. So stick around so that you guys can see that. All right. So those were the updates. So let's actually get into it, right? Let's get into it. Let me go back to 
my desktop real quick. There we go. Now y'all can see my desktop. Okay. So the first thing that I want to cover in regards to all of these other pieces that go into making videos besides just actually filming them and editing them, right? Like those are the mechanical pieces, but I would say that this, what the stuff I'm going to talk about today is actually the more important stuff, right? It's all about staying organized. It's all about showing the video in the correct light. So the first thing that I'm going to show you guys today is thumbnails. Now, this is something that I could definitely get better at, but I'm going to show you my basic process for thumbnails. So if I go into I'm just getting this open on my other screen and then I'll drag it over. Here we go. All right. So you'll get to see a little bit of the videos that are coming. Um, if you can read that, <laughs> uh, you'll end up seeing them this this stream. And if you like seeing those, that's something that my patrons get. I demand a sneak peek. You're going to get it at the end. Someone type that to Landon. She's going to get it at the end. OK, so what I do first when I'm making a thumbnail is I show it. I set it up so that I'm like I'm filming, right? Like I put my phone up there just like I do when I'm filming. So if you remember back to that video and I essentially make a little video of me making funny faces. So like, for example, my Christmas video, I made this little video right here. So let's open this. We're going to open this with VLC. So VLC. What? I'm not that patient. <laughs> You'll get patient. OK, so it's just a video of me making a bunch of silly faces. So I can't I'm trying to remember what I actually chose for this. I think something like this, something close to this face is what I chose, right? So then what I do is I do, it's control S, I believe. Nope, maybe it's shift S, shift S. Yeah, and it makes a screenshot. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi, for translating it. Okay, so it takes a screenshot and then that's in my pictures right here. So I'm gonna open this up and for some reason, VLC takes it upside down. I have no idea why. And then I would rotate this, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and close that. That's all I have to do. OK, so to make sure that I'm working with the right one, let me just take this out to my desktop. We can close this. OK, so I've got my basic image. Now what I do is I need to get that image on my phone. So I use my Google Drive for that. So like what I'll do, open it up right here. So I'll just upload it straight to my drive. OK, we're going to talk about those scripts that are in there in a second. There we go. So now this is getting uploaded to my Google Drive. OK, now give me just a moment to get some stuff open on my phone. And I will show you guys what I do with this picture. Now, while I'm doing that, what I want to say is it's really important, I feel like, to have to do the process of like taking the funny pictures, right? And the reason why this is so important is because as humans, we are wired to pay attention to faces. So putting your face or a face in the thumbnail, just, just by the virtue of it being a face, gets more clicks, it gets more attention, it gets more um, interest in the video. So I always will recommend to use your face or a face in the thumbnail. Now. There are plenty of successful thumbnails that don't do that, right? But by and large, that's the advice I would give. OK, so I'm just saving this to my phone. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use our handy dandy phone editing app. And I use, what is this thing called? PixArt. OK. And let me get my up here so you guys can see my phone. I actually bought the app this time. Unlike last time when I tried to show my phone and it kept stopping every 60 seconds. I actually bought the app this time so that wouldn't happen. Yes, I spent a dollar on a silly app for you guys, <laughs> but hopefully it will be worth it. Okay, here we go. All right. So I've got PixArt open and this app is cool. You can do a lot of stuff with it, but there's just one thing that I do with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select this picture, right? 
Yeah, and that was pretty close. I think that was almost the exact shot. There's the one I actually used in the thumbnail. But all I do here is make my skin beautiful. That's it. I don't do this type of editing on my videos themselves. I don't do this type of editing on stream. I don't even know if you can do it on stream. You probably can. Like, you can do everything these days. I just don't know how. Um, but I do do it on the thumbnails because that's the first thing you see, right? So it's important that that looks good. All right. So then we're going to just download this back to the phone. Okay. And then we're done with this. Don't need this anymore. Oh, Lord. Go away. All right. Blocked. Sorry, y'all. To get them out of here. Hmm. Sorry, I got stuck in a menu. It wants me to... There we go. Okay, reported. I get. I might have to turn on follower-only chat. I don't know. Because that's starting to happen like almost every stream now. It's getting really annoying. Okay, anyway. Back in here, let me just go upload that new photo to drive so we can get access to it and they really don't look that different it's just like a, a slight little bit nicer um you know so that people so that people kind of like it's just like a subconscious thing right Okay, it's uploading that version. All right, so then I've got this version right here, and I'm going to download this. Don't need this one. Why is this? Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to Canva. So if you guys have done a lot of um, image editing, you probably know Canva, but if you don't, I'm gonna tell you this thing is the best. They have everything everything you could possibly want. Okay, let me show you. See, okay, you can literally just type in thumbnail and look at all of these really nice thumbnail templates already built for you. You can be garbage at graphic design like I am and you can still make a decent thumbnail. Like, just look at all this stuff, it's beautiful. Like, I love Canva. Um, and even the free version, you get a ton with it. Uh, there's a few things that you can't do with the free version, but for the most part, everything worth doing, you can still do in the free version. So let me go over to my designs. Canva. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So this is the designs that I use for the, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, spoilers, spoilers for those of you that are not patrons on what you're going to be getting this coming up month. If you like seeing that, then uh, become a patron so that you can see that every month. But what I do here essentially is like, let's go down. I made the Chris made a Christmas one. So here we go. This is the Christmas one. I made it special Christmas colors. And all I really do is I'll go and upload the picture. Like, where is it? Yeah, this one. Give it a chance to upload. And then I would drag it over and it becomes the background, right? Oh yeah, y'all um y'all make sure that you redeem again if you see if you have a hundred spell reagents so we can get make sure that another picture is unlocked at the end. But then you can see kind of what I did here, right? Like I went, I clicked on this and I changed the color to dark green and clicked on this and changed the color to red so it looks Christmassy. I found some transparent free to use snow pictures. Like this right here is the flurries that are in front of me. Um and I just erased what was over my face in Photoshop. So I actually did that part in Photoshop. Um, Canva doesn't give me the ability to just erase part of the image. And then uh, I don't see it in here, but I had another image. Oh no, I must've did this in Photoshop too. So I put the snow bank on here in Photoshop. But this thing is amazing. So you can see, 
like for example, this is a video that's going to come out in December. And because I already have this template set up, all I have to do is like drag the picture over, right? Adjust it however I want, and then change the text to whatever I want. That's it. Once you kind of have, um, then if it's not letting you redeem it, then 15 minutes haven't passed yet, I think. Um, let me check on my, make sure I didn't jack it up. Yeah, Naomi, if you have 3K, you should definitely be able to redeem it. Uh, let's see, let's see. I can actually go look at how I set up that particular one. Yeah, it says every 15 minutes. And there's no other limits on it, so you should definitely be able to redeem another one. Is that happening to anybody else that has enough spell reagents? All right. Um, it says it's out of stock. Oh, hang on. That doesn't make any sense. Because it's not limited. It's just limited to 15 minutes. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Um, maybe it wasn't quite 15 minutes yet. I'm not sure. Um, but thank you, Lunar. That's two. That's two that we'll get to see. Okay. So for the thumbnails, my recommendation is go through all of those Canva things that I showed you. Just type in thumbnail and just scroll through them until you find a design that you like. And then it's literally like drag and drop pictures of your face. Like that's really it. That's really all you have to do. Um, now I know that, uh, that my graphic design is not, you know, it's not always the best. It happened 18 minutes ago. I got all the timers going. Maybe Twitch is goofing. Yeah, maybe Twitch is goofing, but we have two now, so we're good. We're still on track. Um, but that's really all you have to do for thumbnails is I would say, make sure that your face or a face is in it and use Canva. Like, let me go back to the designs. So there's like other ones that I do. Um, so I don't put my face on my stream ones, which is a mistake, I probably should, but the truth is like, I just don't want, it's just too much work, so I just don't do it. <laughs> Sorry, it's the truth. But like, okay, so here's like the layout for the one that we do on the Saturday stream, and I just change the text here every time. And then I'll hit download, and it's PNG, right? And I want this first page. And then I'll download it and it's just a beautiful PNG that's the exact right images for the YouTube thumbnail. And then like, here's the artistic license ones. And you can get kind of fancy with this, like this particular type of text right here. If you go to effects on the text, you can give them some neat little effects, right? So I have this splice. Oh, I just jacked it all up by doing it that way. Go back to white. There we go. And, um, and that's really, that's it. That's all there is to it. Everything in Canva is so super intuitive. So that is my recommendation. If you don't actually have a lot of time or maybe a lot of graphic design skills, Canva is the way to go with making your thumbnails because you literally can just pick from a template, like thumbnail. Let's go back and look at this one more time. Just so you guys can really see the huge amount of variety here. It's just amazing, right? I don't see the one that I originally chose that I ended up using for my thumbnails, but you get the idea, right? Like you get the idea. Like, I think this is another really cool one where if you have like a main image and then a few other images, um, it'll you can just drag other images on top of these pastas and make it be about anything, like, right? It doesn't have to be about food, of course. And some of these have all kinds of really cool, like, you know, little effects in it, like all these colorful boxes here on this one with the dog. So those are my thumbnail tips. That's basically what I do. I film it like it's a video. Then I use VLC to take a screenshot of myself. I use PixArt, which is an app on your phone to smooth out my skin so that it looks nice and glowing in case anybody's looking at giant ass thumbnails. 
and then I use Canva to actually make and design the thumbnail itself. If I need to do anything super fancy, I do have Photoshop, but typically I don't do anything like that. I just do it in Canva. Like most of these, if we go back. Most of these is just Canva, like straight up. Like, like this one, this is just straight up Canva. It might look like I use Photoshop because I have these horns, but all I did was I went into Elements, and I don't remember exactly what I chose, but I just put in horns and here's a bunch of them. Now, a lot of these are not free. Like you can see this says pro, so you'd have to get pro, but like a lot of them are free too. So that's what I do for the thumbnails. All right, what we want to do next, I'm gonna close out of this. We don't need Canva anymore. So what I wanna show you guys next is the way that I do my uploading. So inside of YouTube, you have YouTube Studio. Now you're not gonna see anything too mind blowing in here because um, my channel is just not that big, right? But I can still show you kind of how this works. So essentially what you do when you want to upload a video is you hit create and you do upload videos and you have a whole bunch of settings in here that you would set after you select the file. But you can always go and change these settings too. Like I'll show you if I come in here Let's go ahead and edit the Christmas video. It automatically puts all of this stuff in the description because, do a new tab so we don't lose where we are there, because I told it to do that by default. So if we come in here and we go to, I think it's customization. No, that's the channel customization. Must be under, the settings is under settings. If you come under settings, there's a bunch of default stuff that you can set, right? If I go under channel, these are default tags that go on every single video, right? And these are, sorry, no, these are the tags for the whole channel. These are the tags for the whole channel. And then if I go to advanced settings, this is where I say do like the for kids or not for kids defaults. And then these are future, these are future eligibility. This is very simple stuff. But what I wanted to definitely show you in here is these upload defaults. You can have a default title that goes in for everything you upload, a default description. You can tell it by default if you want the video to be private or not, default tags that go on every video. It makes it so easy to edit stuff as you upload it. So what I typically will do is I give it the title, right? Whatever the title is. And then I do this little line thingy. And then I say spare room because this is a spare room episode. Now, if it's not a spare room episode, then I put like line artistic license or, you know, whatever. Y'all have seen this. So I'm labeling the show here. And then I have my default description. And for if there's anything else that I want to put in here, I might put it at the top, depending on what it is. Or if it's more like a sources thing, I'll tend to put it at the bottom. Like this is a favorite tropes video, just like we did for the vampire one. So here's all the tropes that we're going to talk about. And then um, I found a compilation for uh, somebody that had compiled a whole bunch of like free to use Christmas music, royalty free and, um, and free to use. So this is where I got that because y'all will hear that in the video. Then you can add it to the various playlists. So of course this one goes under spare room episodes and inspiration. And then no, it's not for kids. And then you've got all your tags here. So you can see I added these tags, Christmas, Christmas tropes, and Christmas inspiration. And then we've got all of our default tags. So typically what I'll do is I'll copy them all and then I'll erase them because you can only, like you can't add a tag here. I can only add it at the end. So like if I deleted that tag, then I have to add it back here. And now it's at the end. And my understanding is that the front tags mean more than the ending tags. I don't know if any of that's true. That's just what I've been told. The YouTube algorithm is incredibly secretive. YouTube does not actually tell you how it works. So advice in regards to that is all coming from people that have looked at it, that have studied it, and it changes all the time. So it's possible that tags aren't even super important anymore, but my understanding is that's how it does search indexing. So I still put these tags on here. And then the other things that you can set here that are important is the end screen. So when you get to the end of the video, you can give them various things that they can do. Like this is subscribing, right? This is um, the inspiration playlist because I put a playlist on here and then best for viewer. So you can have, like if I hit video here, 
You can do most recent upload, you can do best reviewer, you can choose a specific video, whatever you want. So the end screen, that's another thing that YouTube recommends you do to kind of help people continue watching more videos on your channel, right? We didn't actually make any changes, so we're discarding that. And then the other thing that you can do here is setting these cards. So whenever I, I say, I'll say in my script, you know, click up here, it's in the card, or I, I made a video on this. I'll make sure that that is linked here, but it lets you add up to five. So I just added a whole bunch. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily something you have to do, but I have been told by the experts that it helps with people finding more videos on your channel. So that's what I do. So that's basically what it looks like when you upload the videos. Okay, so I wanted to cover these things first because I know they're the things that a lot of people ask about in regards to YouTube videos. If you have further questions, let me know. Um, but what I really wanna talk about next is the stuff that I think is actually really important. It's the process. This is how to stay organized, okay? This is how to actually like, how do you actually make a video every single week? Because it's hard, right? It's hard work to make a video every single week. So we can go ahead and close these. And I wanna show you guys basically how I do that. So I'm not gonna just open it straight up because then it'll open tabs I don't necessarily want to show. But this video stats and ideas right here, this spreadsheet. This is everything. This is how I do it, okay? I plan and plan and plan and plan and plan to death. This is all the videos I did in 2018 slash 2019. This is all the videos I did in 2020. I've already got a whole bunch of videos on the 2021 tab. Uh, I'm not gonna show those because that is a Patreon perk, getting to see, getting to know what videos are coming before they come out. So if you're interested in that, join the Patreon. And then this is another tab that Again, because it's a Patreon perk, I'm not going to show it on stream, but I also have a whole list of ideas. Any idea that pops into my head, it goes on the ideas tab. Now there's stuff that's been sitting there on that ideas tab since 2019 at this point, right? Because I never decided how I was actually going to make it into a video, right? But everything goes on the ideas tab, every single thing, right? And then what happens is I do this month by month, right? So it's about to, it's December, which means that all of these videos are done. So I finish them all. And what I'm working on now is scripting the videos for January. Okay, it's the beginning of December. So what I do during the first week of a new month is script the videos for the next month. So all of my December videos are done. They're done, right? Oops, there we go. And now I am working on scripting the January videos, right? So I give myself one week to write the scripts for the January videos. When it's a five Wednesday month, like December was, I'm not gonna lie, that's really hard to do. Um, but that's, that's how I do it. So I do all the scripting. And I try my best to write the initial script and then go through it once more and then once more again before I ever film. Doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes I get to go through it maybe one more time instead of two more times before I film. And then what inevitably happens is I change stuff while I'm filming. <laughs> but that is how it goes sometimes, right? Like I still have a day job. Um, I still, you know, have a husband and, uh, and pets and stuff and other responsibilities. So the ideal and what actually happens are different, right? But I always at least have the first draft of the script within that first week. And then for the second week of the month, so if we look at a calendar here, like essentially what I'm working on right now is I need to have the scripts done at like partway through this week, right? Like I want to have all the scripts done probably by the 11th. And the reason why is because on the 12th and 13th on my weekend, right, when I'm not working, I want to film all of those January videos. So I want to get them all filmed. And then that gives me all of this time here until January starts down here, all of this time here to get them edited, which the two most time consuming parts of this whole process is the scripting here, which is incredibly time consuming, and then the editing here, again, incredibly time consuming. Filming the actual stuff, not that time consuming, right? Doesn't take a lot of time to film. What takes a lot of time is the scripting and the editing. So that is how I do that. 
And when it comes to those scripts, let me show you all the process here. Okay, so I have, oh, we don't need these anymore. Go away. Okay, what I have here is I have the templates for all of the scripts that I'm thinking are gonna happen in January, right? So you'll see spoilers there, right? So this is a, this is a video all about constraint and how giving players constraint drives quality in the role play like letting players do whatever they want we know from experience is not how you get the best role play out of your players right the way you get the best role play out of your players is to give them very specific things that they need to decide and be creative with i was getting thirsty there so what that means is that I want to make a video that talks about that concept. How you don't want to make people stare at the proverbial blank page. So I'll show you, show you kind of how I script. Uh, how to drive. So we're going to talk about how to drive quality with constraints. And content goes here. Okay. Here's how we start. Erase that. Bulleted list. So I'm going to bullet list all of my ideas. So we're going to do this real time, y'all. Okay. So how to drive quality with constraints. So I know I want to talk about uh, how quickly people forget things. There's a stat for this. So I'm going to, we're going to get back to that. I want to talk about um, how hard it is to look at a blank page. How many different ideas someone can hold in their head at once. This probably needs to go after this. So I'm just bulleting it out. I'm just bulleting out the major points that I want to make. Okay, let's take a look at this. Oh my gosh, Cass, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, good night, Naomi. Well, you can come watch the end of the stream. Um, tomorrow morning when I get it posted. Uh, if it's been 15 minutes, make sure that y'all y'all put through uh, another vote for the Freya's Voyage um, spoiler. I'm sure y'all got points enough for it at this point. Okay, so what else do I wanna cover in this video? It's been 15, might take three more. Yeah, Lunar, I bet you have lots of points at this point. <laughs> How many do you have? I think Naomi said she had like, in 3k how many do you have lunar i'm just curious three K, about three K as well. So I guess you guys that come to lots of the streams probably all have around three K or so at this point. So that's funny. <clears throat> I have three K too, but I can't activate it just yet. What does that mean? Oh, probably because it's not been the 15 minutes. So the way that I've got this set up, Cass is that um, every 15 minutes y'all can redeem it and uh, and however many get redeemed is how many uh, spoilers I'm going to re reveal at the end of the stream. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see. Look at a blank. Uh, I think I want to reference my creativity video. To the video. So let me go back and look at this. I keep all of my scripts. So I'm going to, you're going to see now what a finished script looks like. There we go. It's this one. We're not a beautiful and unique. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to read through this script. I want to, I think there's some stuff in here that I probably want to pull out. Okay, I think I want to take this. Ideas don't come from nowhere. Should be able to redeem now. Okay, Marina says you should be able to redeem now. 
All right. So I know that this is the basic stuff that I want to talk about in this script because I bulleted it out. We're going to um, we're going to do it from there. I wonder why Twitch is counting 15 minutes longer than 15 minutes. That's interesting. Mm. <laughs> really weird. Um, I'll have to pay more attention to that next time that I do one of these. Um, yeah, any minute now. Okay. So I know that this is there's a statistic on this. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I knew there was. Okay. No, go away. I'm continuing with my ad blocker. Thank you. So I probably want to actually read this article. Although if I look down, they're not citing any sources. This looks like a pop science website. I try to actually cite things that are a little bit more scientific than that, not just necessarily pop science. What about this one? Oh, I think this must be this must be part of a larger website. What about this one. Oh, from Scientific America. That's fine. Got the cookie. I think this one's probably okay. Oh, I like this. Close to around 2.5 petabytes or 1 million gigabytes. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so like this, this is a good example. Like I know this stat exists, right? So I can find this article that talks a little bit about some of that stuff. It looks like it's talking more about, what's the title of this? What is the memory capacity of the human brain? I think it's talking about overall a little bit, but there's probably some good stuff I can use in here. So I'm going to take this. This might go into my sources. We'll see. I'm not actually going to spend time on the stream reading with you guys because that feels like a waste of y'all's time. But let's see what else there is. I have two or more thoughts at once. They're not really, I feel like that first article really said exactly what I was looking for, but oh, they're doing their drive on Wikipedia again. Let's say, oh, I'm busy. Sorry. Okay, this is talking about the same thing that I was thinking before. Memory span is not consistent even when membered even when measured in a number of chunks. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, this is definitely what I'm looking for. And of course, since it's Wikipedia, it will have um, specific like things that it cites down here. Yeah, okay, this is definitely what I want to read. There we go. Because I know there's only so many things, so many things that someone can hold in their head at once. So I want to use that argument to say, like, why you can't just have a blank slate for somebody. So we're going to kind of build up to that, right? And then there's another piece of data that I know exists. How quickly people get things after they learned it. There we go. Pretty sure this is exactly the stat that I want. Yep. So because I do ed education in my day job, I kind of, I had this stat almost memorized because I've told it to people before. And this is true. People forget 40% of what they learned 20, in 20 minutes and 70% of what they learned in six days. Like if you ever read something and then like immediately like forgot huge chunks of what you read, well, there you go. That's just kind of how your brain works. But I think the argument that I want to make in this video is you can only hold so many ideas in your head. After you read something, you're going to forget most of it pretty immediately. And then I think I want to build from that into how hard it is to look at a blank page. And I don't think I need any sources for this. This is something I can speak about from a personal experience. And then I think I round it back out with referencing the stuff I said in the creativity video, that ideas don't come from nowhere. So then when I make those points, then I can talk about how, um, what that means is you want 
the players making two, two to four, maybe? I think that's typically what we do. I'll have to look back at past RPs and see if that's typically what we do. But I think they're typically making two to four major decisions in making a character. Oh, that means I need to make sure that I introduce this video in like a, this is about when players join group role play. Okay. So from these bullet points, I kind of know how the video is going to go, right? So this, so then I'm going to start writing. And when I write my scripts, when I might write my scripts, they don't go through like exactly what I'm going to say, but I still will write it out in full sentences, right? Just because it gives me a chance to really digest and think about my words, even if that's not exactly what ends up coming out of my mouth. So maybe we start this one like this. And I would narrate this for you as I type, but I don't think I'm capable of that. <laughs> so very sorry. Okay, so we're going to talk today about... Okay, so we're going to talk today about why it's important to have a specific character creation process when you're creating a role play group. I'm taking a look at my notes because I realized I cannot type and talk at the same time, and I don't want to bore you guys by not talking. So I'm looking at what other pieces of information. Okay. So I'll explain to you this process. So essentially what I do is I start writing it out like this. Let's go back to the finished script so you can see what I mean. Well, actually, let's look at a more recent one because I, I get more organized over time. So I'll show you like a really recent one. Like, let's look at this one. This players keep leaving my role play. So you can see here the bullet points kind of became these bolded kind of section headers, right? So we have our little introduction, and then we have a section header understanding the type of player that you're looking for and what I talk about there. Set up a good role play in the first place, be fair, let it go, focus on attracting new people, and then you have the major points one, two, three, four, five down there. So like my bullet started out as like kind of a proto version of these one, two, three, four, five, and then I built it from there. So the uh, another thing that I do when I'm scripting it all out, like why this is highlighted is, as you guys that have been watching me for a while, you know, I didn't always have this, but once I started adding in my videos like a lead in before the video even started, so you kind of like heard like a little clip of what might happen in the video, I've started going and like highlighting these in my script to make it easier for me when I'm editing. So as I'm editing the video, I know that this is the line that I wanna pull out and put in the front. So I can say like, okay, well, it's about this far into the video, and I can kind of look on my timeline for that and find it very easily. And then I also see where my section breaks are so I can find all of that stuff really easily. Having a good organized script really, really helps with the filming process. And I would strongly recommend that you have some kind of scripting if you're trying to do stuff like this. The other thing to keep in mind is you can know from the script about how long a video is going to be. So if I go here, word count, the word count on this, oh, this is what's highlighted. Stop highlighting. Okay. Here we go. It's 1,299 words. The average person speaks at 150 words per minute. So if I do 1299 out of 50, it's about an eight and a half minute video. If we go look at that, the players keep leaving my role play video. You can see it's nine minutes and 16 seconds. So the content of the video itself is about the length. 
the 8.66, but you know there's an intro and there's an outro, so it's always going to be a little bit longer, of course, um, than what actually the script says, but this can give you a really good idea of about how long a video is going to be. Eight and a half minutes, and it turned out to be about nine minutes at the end when I added in, you know, everything else that goes on besides just me talking. So what it really comes down to in regards to this process, it's really about working ahead, right? So I wanna talk just a little bit more about that and my whole like doing things a month early. The whole reason I do things so early is because life is unpredictable. You never know what's gonna pop up and you might be able to not be able to work on your videos for a while. So if you already have them going a month in advance, you can adjust. Like this month was a really good example of that. I was not on schedule this month for the December videos because I had a whole week that I couldn't really work on them because Thanksgiving happened, right? So I did not get to finish editing all the videos. I did finish filming them and I edited like one video maybe before Thanksgiving. But because I was working a month ahead instead of just working week by week, I was able to do that and release all the videos still for December. Like they're all up and they're all gonna go up at the right time. <clears throat> and having that I think is really important. It's really important not only for the videos but also for the streams. Like I have an outline for the Interstage Window stream that I do with Landon. I have an outline for these streams, although because these are very experimental and I do all kinds of different crazy things, I'm not always as good at having the right amount of time. I want to redeem, but it won't let me. Oh my gosh, what is going on with this thing? Okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Because I'm realizing now that I don't think I have a, another hour's worth of content. I may have another 20 minutes worth of content. I'm going to fix this. We're going to fix this. So. Okay. I'm taking off that. Okay. I changed it. Instead of it every 15 minutes, it's now just eight redemptions for the whole stream because that's how many I prepared. Spoilers to show you guys. So you can, you should be able to redeem all eight if you want to now. <laughs> there we go. The 15 minute timer, I guess, was broken today. It totally worked when we did the Discord one. I don't know what happened, you guys. Um, we're blaming tit Twitch. <laughs> I don't know, but you can redeem eight now. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, you guys. <sighs> it is what it is. Okay, um, does anybody on the stream have questions about any of the stuff that I've gone over with the process, with the scripting. Um, I realize like me actually writing a script is going to be super boring. I thought I might do that, but I'm not going to do that because I can't do that and talk at the same time. <laughs> so you'd literally just be watching me write, which feels really silly. So we're not going to do that. Um, and so for that, what that means is that I've covered all of the stuff that I wanted to make sure that I talked with you guys about today. So at this point, what questions do you have? And while y'all are kind of thinking of that, feel free to keep redeeming for more of the spoilers. Make sure we can do all of them. It looks like we have, let's see how many. One, two, three, four redeems. So there's four more which you guys can redeem for those Freya's Voyage spoilers. All right, there's five, six. I'm gonna give you all a few more minutes to think of seven. I'm gonna, we're gonna do the Pokemon meme. We're gonna do the Pokemon meme, y'all, while y'all are getting those all redeemed. On Photoshop. Come on, Photoshop. Over on this side. There we go. We did it. Okay. Yes, we're gonna do the Pokemon meme, and then I will show you guys the Freya's Voyage spoilers that you have been waiting for. And we'll just do kind of a short stream today, which is okay. You know, that's part of this artistic license stream that I don't, 
because it's experimental because I'm just kind of doing like all different kinds of things there's not really a specific structure it's a lot harder for me to time it <laughs> that's the truth um I can definitely time an episode of uh of inner stage window no problem I can time an episode um I can I can time spare room like I know those episodes are going to be between like five and 15 minutes and I can always hit that no problem artistic license that's not a thing sometimes I make a guess and I am just wrong about how long something is going to take Alrighty. okay so let's open up our little search here come over here okay yes y'all did it all right so the first pokemon that we're going to look at we're going to look at a bunch of gen 3 pokemon this time the first one is going to be our ice type sort by national dex number here we go Okay, so for this one, we have the snowy cast form, we've got our snow runt line, and we've got our sphiel line. So for those of you guys that have been watching these parts of the stream, you probably know I go for the cute. So obviously what that means is my ice type favorite for this generation is the sphiel. Like, just look at him. He's freaking adorable. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Sphiel. Okay, let's look at his entry. There we go. Sphiel is much faster rolling than walking to get around. When groups of this Pokemon eat, they all clap at once to show their pleasure. Because of this, their mealtimes are noisy. Sphiel always travels by rolling around in its ball-like body. When the season for ice flows arrive, the Pokemon can be seen rolling about on ice and crossing the sea. And he literally looks like a little, little ball, a little ball of seal right there. So let's reveal that. We're going to go down to the ice types. Gen 3. And here we go. There he is, right there. We haven't done a lot of Gen 3 Pokemon yet, so this is, uh, we only had like Electric, right? So these are some other ones. All right, next we're going to look at the Fairy type for this generation. All right, so Fairy types, we have the Ralts line, or Azuril, or Mawile. So I do like Mawile, we're going to get to him in a second, but for the fairy type, I really like Gardevoir, which I think is kind of the basic choice, right? Like I think most people probably pick Gardev Gardevoir, but I pick her too. Like she's beautiful. Like look at that. She's just so cute. Let's look at her entry. Gardevoir has the ability to read the future. If it senses impending danger to its trainer, this Pokemon is said to unleash its psychokinetic energy at full power. Gardevoir has the psychokinetic power to distort the dimensions and create a small black hole. This Pokemon will try to protect its trainer, even at the risk of its own life. That's something I love about Pokemon. These, like, descriptions are so freaking extra. <laughs> and then in the game, of course, they can't do any of that. <laughs> but I love um, pretending like that's something that they could really do, right? Like in a Pokemon roleplay or something. All right, so that's our Gen 3 fairy type. So let's next look at the Steel type. So I kind of spoilered this a little bit, right? Like I said, I liked them all a while, but let me show you guys what the other Steel types are. Just a reminder, despite being very feminine, Gardevoir doesn't have to be female. Pokemon breaking gender stereotype. True, Gardevoirs can be male. They do not have to be female. I love that about them. So in addition to Mawile for the Steel type, you could also choose one of the Aaron line, or you could choose one of the Beldum line. That would be valid as well. But I kind of already made it obvious. I like Mawile. I think it's like one of those ones that's kind of like cute scary, right? <laughs> like it's got this big old thing here that's like scary, but then it's actual like the rest of its body is really adorable. Okay, let's look at his entry. Mawile's huge jaws are actually steel horns that have been transformed. Its docile looking face serves to, fool, to lull its foe into letting down its guard. When the foe least expects it, Mawile chomps at it with its gaping, gaping jaws. Blew, that one was hard to read for some reason. Don't be taken by this Pokemon's cute face. It is very dangerous. Mawile fools its foes into letting down its guard, then chomps down with its massive jaws. The steel jaws are really horns that have been transformed. The sapphire one, I feel like, just did, said the same thing in the opposite direction as the ruby one. So that's kind of cheating. That's kind of cheating, Mawile. Okay, let me find my steel. That's the steel type for Gen 3 that I really like. 
All right, next we are going to look at, oh, wrong one. This one, Pokemon one. Okay, next we are going to look at poison types. All right, poison type four, Gen three. We can do Dustox, Roselia, or the Gulpin line, or Survivor. So um, my heart says to pick Roselia here, but what we're actually going to do is pick Dustox. We're going to get Roselia in just a second. So here's Dustox. I think it's really pretty. Like I know that a lot of people um, moths are not their thing, but I think Pokemon version of a moth really nice. I like them. Dustox is instinctively drawn to light. Forms of this Pokemon are attracted by the bright light of cities, where they wreak havoc by stripping the leaves off of roadside trees for food, so they eat all your trees. When Dustox flaps its wings, a fine dust is scattered all over. This dust is actually a powerful poison that will even make a pro wrestler sick. This Pokemon searches for food using its antenna-like radar. So, very cool. Uh, I think it's a lot like mods in real life in a lot of ways. Mochi, oh my gosh, hey. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving too. Um, moths are super cute, but they freak out Kai. No, okay. If there was a moth head in, um, in Among Us, then maybe I would have to wear that for Kai. <laughs> I like them. I think moths and butterflies are cool. So, Dustox, that's my poison type pick. And then the last one we're going to look at today is Roselia. So as I said before, Roselia is my grass type choice, but let me show you guys what the other ones that you could choose for grass are. So you could choose the Trico line, right? So if you like Trico as a starter, that's in there. The Lotad line, the C Dot line, um, iconic, right, for Nuzlocks. Uh, Shroomish, Shroomish or Breloom, and then they've got Roselia, um, Cacturn line, and then the Lilip line, or Tropius. So lots of good choices here. Like, I think Tropius is a pretty cool Pokemon. Lilip's a pretty cool Pokemon. But Roselia, I mean, it's like the Rose Pokemon, right? And I'm all about the cute. So that's what we have to go with. And here is Roselia. This is another one. Looks like a girl, but absolutely doesn't have to be. You see that 50-50 gender ratio right there. All right. Roselia shoots sharp thorns as projectiles at any opponent that tries to steal the flowers on its arms. The aroma of this Pokemon brings serenity to living things. On extremely rare occasions, a Roselia is said to appear with its flowers in unusual colors. The thorns on this Pokemon's head contain a vicious poison. All right, so we can close this because we're done with it. Let's go back to our Photoshop. And that is my grass type choice for gen 3. So there we go, filling this out a little bit more. Okay, so here's what you guys have been waiting for. The Freya's Voyage Boilers. We unlocked all eight. What I wanna tell you guys is that what I'm about to show you are a piece of background. This is a background piece for your character and it's called Home Planets. I'm gonna show you an image of each of the home planets, okay? There's one, another one, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, that's all we're gonna say right now. We're not gonna explain any more. If you're interested in hearing some spoilers, like hearing a little bit more about this, uh, this role play, not just image spoilers. You'll want to join us on Saturday for Interstage Window because, and I'll have to fix how this worked because every, every 15 minutes thing was not working today, so I'll have to take a look at that. But we are going to do something very similar where every 15 minutes we're going to allow you guys to spend your points to reveal a spoiler, and um, me and Landon will pick something out about the role play to read to you guys, all right? So if this looks cool to you, if you liked what you saw when we built the Discord server, if this is all like looking neato, then make sure that you join us on Saturday for Interstage Window because we are going to be sharing some more Freya's Voyage spoilers um, at, on that stream. I have to work, but I'll tune in if I can. Oh, well, don't miss work for us, Lunar. <laughs> Go to work. Uh, you know, get that bread. Um, but of course, the, the VODs will be up later that day. So if you miss it live, you can always watch it then. And we are going to talk about uh, fantasy versus realism. And we are definitely going to be relating it back to a lot of the, the stuff that we've been working on for Freya's Voyage. So 
that's your spoiler. Home planets, and here's an image of each one. Okay, so short stream today. I didn't plan it very well. That's okay. That happens sometimes, right? They can't all be perfect when I have a variety stream where we do whatever the hell. <laughs> uh, it didn't take as long to go through my process as I thought it would, but I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you got some good uh, organization tips out of that, and I hope you guys really enjoyed the Freya's Voyage spoilers. So um, here's here's all of the things, right? Uh, down below, you can find all of the places to, to find me. I stream on Thursday, Artistic License. That's the stream you're watching right now, where we do kind of whatever I want for hopefully two hours, but not always. Sometimes we end early, right? Uh, and then we also have Interstage Window, which is a Saturday stream, which is a conversation with uh, Landon and sometimes a guest, where we get more of a deep dive onto a particular role play topic. And then we also have on Wednesdays, my spare room episodes, which are the scripted short episodes of role play advice and tips and inspiration and things like that. Those go up on YouTube on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Uh, also down below, you can join my Discord server. You can follow my Twitter. That's at It's Karen Terry. And right there is mostly advertisements, but also sometimes I post hot takes. So if that interests you, follow my Twitter. And, uh, and that's really it. That's really it. I have to say, I missed you guys. I missed streaming. It was really nice to stream again. And, uh, and I will see you guys all on Saturday. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. See y'all then. Bye.